Hey, hey, it's Tyler, owner and artist of Rehab to Fab Designs and content creator for Dixie Bell Paint Company. And today I wanted to invite you along this trip with me while I flip this little side table. All right, let's get started on this cute little table. Yeah. First, we're going to clean it with some white lightning from Dixie Bell. White Lightning is a chemical degreaser from Dixie Bell and is a must for cleaning all your projects before you get started on them because we all know if we don't start with a clean project, we are not going to get good paint adherence. It comes in granule form in a little container and you simply mix up the granules with some warm water and then keep it in a spray bottle so that whenever you need to clean a piece, you can simply spray it on there and then wipe it clean with some paper towels or some rags or whatever it is that you like to use to clean with. You'll want to keep doing this until your piece wipes clean and then you'll want to come back over the whole thing again with some wet soapy paper towels or um, washcloths to make sure it rinses clean and you don't have any residue from the cleaner left on your piece. Once it's nice and clean, it's time for paint. I decided for this piece, I was going to do a neutral finish. I know, I know, not my normal go-to. However, sometimes you can still have neutral colored pieces that are still fun and still have lots of character. So I'm gonna start off with two coats of French linen from Dixie Belle, which is a nice neutral beigey taupe color. I'm applying it with the Dixie Belle synthetic brush. It's an angled mini and one of my go-to favorites for applying any paint. This was a jar that had been previously used on other products and because I am a bad student and instead of pouring my paint out on paper plates so that I can keep my jars clean, I typically tend to just dip my brushes right into my jar. Unfortunately, when you do this, you also tend to drag the side of the brush on um, the side of the jar and this ends up causing the paint to dry around the rim, which can lead to little bits and pieces of crusty paint that fall into and get on your brush um, the next time you paint. So I ended up kind of tossing this one aside and getting a new one because I got tired of picking out those little crusty pieces. So do as I say, not as I do. Pour your paint on a plate. That way you don't have this issue. Okay? All right, good. So I did have some scratches on here and also like splits because this is a really kind of primitive rustic piece and it had like a split in it. Um, so I did come in with some Dixie Belle mud to fill all those areas. Once it was dry, I sanded it smooth and then I'm gonna come back with my second coat of paint. When applying your paint, you're welcome to put it on in short strokes and small sections um, when you're working to do smaller parts at a time. However, once you get it all on this whole panel, I do recommend kind of brushing all the way from top to bottom down the length of the piece um, so that you get nice long strokes and this will help you to decrease brush strokes when you're done. Remember I said, um, even though you're doing neutral colors, you can make a piece um, a little extra. I'm going to do that for this piece using Dixie Belle stencil, Don't Be Square. When applying paint over a stencil, I like to make sure I don't get any bleed through up under the stencil. So when you're doing these, you wanna make sure you're not putting too much paint on because excess paint will cause bleed throughs. So the easiest way to do this is either to apply it using a small sponge or a roller. I'm using a four inch roller in a half inch nap and I'm using cotton for my actual stencil design. And again, using the Don't Be Square stencil. So what I do is pick up a minimal amount of paint on my roller, but making sure I have it on 
all sides or all the way around the actual roll but then i use cardboard paper paper towel whatever you have handy to roll off any excess paint i want it to be almost not really dry but pretty close to it because i don't want to have paint squishing out from that foam roller um, because this is going to cause it to bleed up under the stencil design itself and then you'll end up with a dirty stencil or not clean lines to help keep your stencil in place while painting you can lay your piece flat you can add tape to hold it down you can also use an adhesive spray to help hold it in place or you can use an extra set of hands like i'm doing here now, if you want a perfect stencil, you're going to want to apply the same amount of paint all over the whole surface of the stencil, meaning that you have the same amount of thickness um, in the paint. If you want more of a kind of distressed, worn kind of look, which is typically what I do with my stencils, I will apply it heavier in some areas over the stencil and then lighter in others. And this just kind of gives it like an old, worn look. Once you reach the bottom of your stencil, you're simply going to lift it up and then move it down or move it to the side or whatever it needs to do to fill the space on your project and then continue on until your piece is covered. It is a good idea to check all stencils before you use them if you are putting it on a surface area that is larger than the stencil itself. A good idea to check it beforehand to make sure that the stencil does line up so it is in a repeating pattern so that if you're applying it to an area that's smaller than the stencil, when you get to the end, you want to be able to pick it up and move it over or move it down and it pick right back up where it left off. So you have a nice continuous design. Once it's done and dry, I come over it with sandpaper just to knock down the high edges and make sure it's nice and smooth. The next thing I decided to do was kind of dirty up or kind of grunge up the stencil. I love the bright white of this color in contrast to the French linen. However, I do want to make it look, um, like I said, kind of distressed or worn, which is why I did the kind of distressed look with the paint over the stencil. But I want to add a little bit more to it to antique it, to age it, to make it look a little older. And so to do that, I am going to add Dixie Belle's Voodoo Gel Stain in the color called Tobacco Road. I am spraying water on the piece. I am applying stain on a paper towel, and then I am rubbing it lightly and dabbing it and blotting it over the stencil design, mostly in the corners and down the sides because that's where you would have more wear and tear and more use and darker areas naturally. And then you can uh, um, spray with a misting bottle to remove if you get it heavier in areas than you want. Simply spray it with water and wipe it back with a clean paper towel. Just keep doing this until you like the look and get it the way you want. I went ahead and painted the sides and the inside actually of this drawer. It wasn't in terrible shape. The natural wood was actually pretty with the two colors I had chosen, but it just felt like it was kind of unfinished. I did think about stenciling the side. I like to do that on a lot of my pieces because I think it just gives a little added um, interest. However, the drawer fits kind of tight, so I didn't want to add paint to it and then add stencil to it and then a top coat because I was worried it would just all scrape off or rub off um, when opening and closing the door. So I just just went ahead and put a coat of the French linen on the sides and also on the inside of the drawer to complete the look. Once I was done painting, it was time to seal the piece to protect it. Once again, I am using clear coat from Dixie Belle in flat 
as this is my go-to top coat. I'm using a flat medium brush to apply it. I'm gonna do a total of two coats. Um, again, as with any of my painting, I will put it on maybe in smaller, shorter sections, but then once I get it all completely covered, I will drag the top coat from top to bottom down the length of the piece to make sure it's nice and smooth and decrease any brush strokes. I apply two coats um, to the whole piece to make sure it's nice and protected inside and out. And that is it as far as the painting goes. The last thing I did to complete this piece was to add a new piece of hardware. This piece originally had an ugly little broken wood knob on it, but there's no sense in that. We gotta make it cute. This piece is totally giving me Burberry vibes and we can't complete the look without new hardware. So I'm putting on this piece that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. It was $4.99. If you don't know, let me tell you, Hobby Lobby has their knobs and drawer pulls on sale, I think every other week. So it's a great time to uh, stock up on your hardware. Here's a look at this cute little table. Once I finished up, it's barely recognizable. And like I said, totally gives me all the Burberry vibes. Hope you guys enjoyed this flip. Be sure and follow along with the Dixie Belle and Rehab to Fab Designs YouTube channel. Click on the bell for notifications and let us know if you have questions. Thanks.